Hello, Pascal. Hello, Fabrice. <laughs> Here we are once again. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yes. So today we are going to uh, spend a few minutes looking at the scene again that I posted last week uh, with Pascal. Somebody comment, commented. Thank you, uh, everyone, for your great comments, by the way. Uh, somebody asked about um, night lighting. So I thought uh, I'd ask Pascal to join us once again to uh, look at, uh, analyze a little bit more in depth um, how to light this in the scene in kind of three ways and um, see what Pascal has to say and uh, to, to describe this in a little bit more detail than I did last time uh, because as uh, we are now uh, working in this uh, lumen technology we can do anything all the possibilities are open to us and so it would be interesting to start exploring those so uh, just to recap a little bit i've just got this uh, very simple spotlight here uh, kind of just showing uh, uh, the scene in a very kind of um, harsh way harsh way and so we'll open up the um erect lights that i have on the outside of the scene out yeah. here since, since we are in at night time you you did have an emissive uh, uh, you know volume also at night time do you remember yes so i have well if I turn these off, I have this sort of a cube light here, which is just a um, self-illuminated uh, material. Very, very simple. If I just pull that out. Would you put it uh, in the back of the library, uh, far away from us? To see so what if I move of... that out of the way, all the way back that way. So it looks like it's very dark. Yeah, that could be a fill, you know, a sort of a, a sort of an, a, a very low fill. But mm. I was wondering what it would do to put it on the far side of the library where your mouse is on the other side, far away from us, but in the shot. In the shot. Uh -huh, yeah. I see. Um, somebody commented as well that they would use just a, a simple plane, not an yeah. emissive. Okay. Um, light to use as a fill light, which I thought was interesting, which would be a little bit more like a reflector that you would use in the real world. Okay. And we did that, uh, if you remember, in the corridor scene. Yes. Uh, yes, exactly. That was on, on that video. So okay. here uh, we have that kind of filling the space a little bit. And so this is the new um, sort of virtual world metaverse lighting that we'll be able to see and use and uh, get creative with where we can just light scenes with these emissive space emissive lights and it kind of looks really sci-fi doesn't it and you, you see the ceiling for example it's uh, if this emissive light was a little bit uh, lower in the quantity and intensity we would have a sort of a fill but it would be, it would be uh, you know, in the scene, not behind the camera to feel from the camera mm. and, uh, to, the, for, to the background. But it could be that we, we, we put some field light in the scene just to, to, yeah, to attract the, uh, mm. yeah, the viewer in some scenes instead of other, in some parts of the scene instead of others. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. Okay. I'm exploring, uh, you know, with you, Fabrice, I'm discovering. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. So it's we're sort of doing that together uh, and sharing that with everyone, just uh, as I'm I'm exploring as well, the, all the possibilities of, of, uh, of this new um, way of working. So, okay, so this is sort of natural daylight. And again, I've just got these rect lights on the outside, which are just sort of pointing down as opposed to as we saw in the, the corridor scene as opposed to just vertical on the windows so that they don't give too much light onto the ceiling 
So that's kind of important because that's realistic. If you are talking about, you know, real photorealistic light, uh, you, you should mimic the direction of the, the light in the uh, outside of the building. And uh, of course, it would not come from the opposite building. It would come from the sky and from the sun up in the sky. So that's uh, very realistic to, to point them down, mm. uh, to put them just outside of the windows as a, uh, we, we see a lot of uh, people doing, you know, just uh, yes. thinking that orientation uh, doesn't... Uh, As opposed to sort of like this. Yeah, exactly. And like that. Which would be, which would be very... Which gives us too much on the ceiling. So if yeah. I undo that, we can really see the difference. It is all very subtle, but I think that's where we, we're, that's where we need to go in all the, the subtleties. Yes. So then, so mm -hmm. what's interesting is that um, so we're not going to explore direct sunlight um, today, because we kind of saw that last time. Okay. But what we have got also is um, uh, the uplighters that we sort of, we moved from where they were uh, originally in the scene, in the, in the real scene. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the reason why we moved them, uh, literally floating completely out in the space was to uh, give a lot more um, sort of gradient and uh, shadow detail and a little bit of softness as they were in, in the previous video, they were placed here. And you can see we have a, quite a, a, a strong highlight there, a burning, and then they're absent from the, the top of the, uh, of the ceiling here. So we move them out onto the, um, into the space and you can see that it's a lot softer. Yeah. Also, we turn these off, um, they're off because the lighting was very, very uh, uniform and a little bit kind of aggressive. Whereas here we have this nice, interesting sort of rhythm on, off, on, off, on, off this way. And it's a lot softer, a lot more sort of atmospheric. And we yeah, can it, describe it. it. So the, you know the, the impression of uh, of three D, you know the, the of specialization of the yeah uh, of the setup. So th that's nice, yeah. So you you can feel the depth of the the scene, yeah, better. And better. since we are at night time here, uh, shouldn't we have a, a moonlight? Coming moonlight in. exactly <laughs> so let's bring in some moonlight so here I'll, I'll i'll show i mean i don't actually turn these off i just hide them here so um then i actually turned off in the scene but uh, just as we're working here uh so to to give this uh, so it looks obviously looks very much by day right now so to make it look by night well, obviously we could sort of turn the intensity down. I just turned the color down. I think it's, it's a really nice way of doing that because it's, um, it's very, very uh, subtle, a lot of um, precision in this rather than uh, change the intensity of the light here. And then I would edge it a little bit towards the purple, maybe not too much. Uh, ooh, so here I jumped over the way to red. And we'd have this sort of bl bluish tint of the moonlight. Is that would that look? It's uh, you know this bluish nights is it's a sort of a convention. I agree, and uh, so some some guys prefer cyan nights or even neutral lights, neutral nights. But in terms of color, it it adds a, a small contrast between the warm library and the ex you know exterior which is supposed to be a little bit colder and mm. a little bit more uh, hostile you know if uh, in terms of uh, coziness or <laughs> and uh, so that's why we we tend to um, you know color the secondary lights the one which are less important in a slightly colder tint so to, to make the, the exterior feel a little more, bit more uh, inhospitable, you know, mm -hmm. the interior. So signal coldness on the outside, yeah. which will enhance the warmth it's of the inside. The outside, you know, and uh, the very mm -hmm. warm and cozy inside. 
So since we are in a, in a night, uh, you know, setup, could we maybe suggest to the client, for, for example, this Prague library to light the books instead of the, uh, of the ceiling, which would make a little more sense for a library to, to put the books a little bit more in, uh, in focus? As um, let your wish be done. And there oh, we go. Wow. <laughs> and so, yeah, an alternative, completely mm -hmm. different uh, lighting scheme here, which is interesting, um, both in terms of obviously mood and atmosphere, and it just looks so much so inviting here. Uh, I love these reflections in the globes here. We've, we've got a few little bugs or whatever they may be flickering here which i hope may will may go at some point um but much 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 more atmospheric and much more inviting in terms of um mood in a way and uh, like you say it's putting the emphasis on the books yeah. which is what the library should be about and the ceiling becomes secondary mm. this is a lot about this hierarchy isn't it Exactly. It doesn't diminish the importance of the ceiling, but it's uh, putting it uh, just behind the books in terms of uh, importance of which is, which is nice. This kind of lighting was suggested by, you know, this kind of new, you know, fashion lighting like uh, uh, IKEA furniture proposes to put LED lights into your dressings and uh, libraries at home. So why mm. not? That was a um, that could be a pro proposition to your you know, uh, client to... Yes, exactly. And this is uh, kind of the, the power we have in, you know, in the work that I've done over the years in visualization is to, to propose these options, which a lot of the time there's no budget, you know, early on in the project to, to maybe hire a lighting designer. And I, I really encourage um, you to, 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 to dare to, pre to, to present something in lighting by night. And uh, who knows, you know, you'll make a big difference in the project. Yeah. Um, I wanted to point out here the rather drastic loss in performance oh, yes. uh, from uh, just adding all these uh, wrecked lights. Mm. So uh, again, you know, we're, we're going to have this um we always think oh yeah lumen this new technology is going to save us and we'll never have to do light baking ever again and so on but uh, very quickly i i believe we're, we're always going to run into these issues of having uh, a, a large number of lights uh, especially on architecture and uh, and then we'll run into performance issues so that's kind of indicated to me that light baking and uv unwrapping and all this stuff is not going to go away for quite some time until we have uh, just some crazy crazy amounts of power uh, even more than we have now <laughs> if people will want you know with lumen or other and you know uh, uh, one button push uh, capabilities people will become lazy and it's, mm. it's very interesting for, for you and for Fabrice and me to, to, you know, to put that into question to see, okay, it, it facilitates our lives and it's, it's, it's a, a way or to work faster or to maybe to render something faster, but then let's tweak it uh, until it fits your needs and uh, don't, don't just rely on a, a, a button, you know, on a, on a mm. more technology. And we saw that in the corridor, we had to tweak it a little bit, and it was uh, it made a huge difference. So that's the, the way we, we we feel about the work. Uh, just um, because eighty percent of the people will stop uh, just at Lumen, and it will mm. be yeah the daily bread. But uh, we dare to go further with you and uh, to to make you look at things at light, you know, at uh, how. Uh, objects and, uh, and figures and scenes react to the your lighting yeah for example here uh, of course the carpet is uh, you know almost uh, in dark and, and since we are walking there it could be a, a little bit uh, you know uh, menacing uh, exactly so let's try that let's push things further beyond 
Yeah, we, we wanted to think out of the box, as we said today. So we, we moved the light inside the carpet. Inside the carpet. So um, uh, we've so got the carpet. So let me grab the carpet yeah. here. You, you, let's use the media, you know, the 3D real-time uh, 3D media to to to, um, to walk a bit off the beaten path and to, to forget about uh, what is possible in our world. And uh, for example, to make this carpet uh, a light, a light emissary, you know, like... Uh, and so this will be a, the beginning of the new world. <laughs> uh, and see what it does on the on the ceiling. It's uh, quite nice. It's um, it's revealing some of the things. Again, it's not putting emphasis, emphasis on the ceiling, but it's revealing some uh, details. Of course, the bookshelves should be uh, lit. I don't know if Fabrice, if you can light your um, yeah like that. And so we can turn those down a little bit. Yeah. just use the color picker well that's nice and then of course you will say the, the carpet is too bright so that's just a fine fine tweeting uh tweaking the but yes so unfortunately i haven't found a way to uh, maybe increase the indirect lighting in the parameter or the self-illumination mm -hmm. the illumination properties of the material or of the object maybe that's not you place it now your camera uh, on the ground, almost on the ground, you know, forget about uh, and til tilt up until you forget about the carpet. That's mm -hmm. a very nice view, you know, uh, of the of this library. Uh, the lighting is almost perfect. You know, it's very, it's very cozy and inviting. And it, um, it's, it's, it's really enticing. I would say the, the only thing we could add maybe is a, a little spotlight on the um, the book, the open book uh, in the mid ground there. So uh, we can just bring that one. Yeah, why not? You know, to to you know to make the eye of the spectator fix on something precise and then be able to go in in the rest of the frame. So we could put a, a, a little spotlight there and to, to make it uh, to make this object um, more uh, visible you know and maybe even uh, make it the most the brightest object in the in the library it it uh, it's always interesting to to uh, hmm? know to notice that when you enter uh, in an in a new place for example a, a fashionable restaurant or uh, opera house often you see an object one object that is taking uh in, in the, the importance you know the, the first thing you see when you enter is this object and mm -hmm. be in this library this this could be the, the object you notice first so that would be highlighted by a, a special uh, you know spotlight or something like that or maybe colorize a little bit you know to put it uh, in a special uh, uh, color of light, but that's just mm. thinking out loud. But uh, that would be maybe a, a good thing. Yeah. Great. What do you think, Fabrice? Well, I think it's very, very interesting. So exciting to uh, to start exploring all these different possibilities again. Now we can almost do anything. Um, you know, it's, it's, we're going to have to start learning uh, and uh, putting a little bit of structure in how we do things. And uh, so I look forward to uh, doing a lot more of these with you, Pascal. Yes. And uh, let's, uh, let's talk about the uh, post, uh, post process next time. Yeah. Uh, this will be, be have a huge impact on the, on the final uh, render. Sure. Yes, of course. Yeah, well, let's do that. And for those of you who want to try uh, to um, play this model on your own machine, make sure you click below and you can download the uh, exe file. If you've got a PC, you can download it and uh, get, uh, get a little bit closer if you haven't done so already. Cool. Thank you very much, Pascal. Thank you, Fabrice. Thank you, everybody. For See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>